Hey folks, it's Dr. Gersmar from Aspire Natural Health, and in this quick video, I want to talk to you about a question we hear pretty often, and that's, is it safe to use garlic to treat SIBO? So let's back up for just a second and make sure that we're all on the same page. SIBO is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. This is a condition where we have too many bacteria in the small intestine. This overgrowth tends to cause a lot of gas, a lot of bloating, and a lot of inflammation in the small intestine, which can lead to things like food sensitivities, nutrient deficiencies, and other issues. Now there's a spectrum of SIBO from mild and easily treated on the one end to very severe and very difficult to treat on the other and everything in between. So now that we understand understand SIBO, we need to ask, what do bacteria eat? And in the big picture, the answer is almost anything. We found bacteria on radioactive waste and in boiling hot geysers before. But in the case of our gut bacteria, they're mostly going to eat the leftovers of whatever we eat. In particular, many of our bacteria like fiber. Fiber is the indigestible part of plants that's rich in many fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans, and whole grains. For a long time, we've been told the purpose of fiber is simply about pooping, right? If you're constipated, the cure is just to eat more fiber and that will take care of it. And that does sometimes help, but we've come to understand that the reason to eat fiber is twofold. First, Fiber usually comes with nutritious whole foods, which should be a major part of our diet. And secondly, fiber usually feeds the good bacteria in our gut that we need to stay healthy. However, in a situation like SIBO, where we have too many bacteria already, putting in fibers and sugars that bacteria love to eat is like pouring gasoline on a fire. It can flare things up and make people miserable. Now, these sugars and fibers that bacteria love to eat are called FODMAPs. That's F-O-D-M-A-P, FODMAP. And it stands for fructo, oligo, dye, and monosaccharides, and polyols. Now, you don't need to remember any of those terms, just that FODMAPs are rich in bacteria food. Now, on the list of FODMAPs, two common foods stand out, and those are onions and garlic, which is why when we talk about a totally non-scientific test that you can do at home to get an idea of whether you might have SIBO, and that's to eat an onion, cooked or raw, all at once, or spread out over the day. But if that onion gives you a lot of gas, bloating, diarrhea, or constipation, then it's possible you might have SIBO. So many people find that eliminating or reducing things like onion and garlic in their diet can provide them a lot of relief. And so many people are confused when they see that a lot of herbal formulas for treating SIBO have garlic in them. Won't that just make things worse? Great question. Let's answer it. So besides those yummy fibers that garlic is full of, garlic also possesses a staggering amount of awesome plant compounds. You might have heard about how garlic can improve your cholesterol, slightly lower your blood pressure, serve as an antioxidant, and importantly here, kill off bacteria, yeast, and even sometimes parasites. When we're evaluating garlic for use against something like SIBO, we need to consider the ratio of these bacteria-feeding fibers versus the amount of these bacteria-killing compounds. Now, when we're talking about food-based garlic, most people are going to find that the fibers win out over the bacteria-killing compounds and that food garlic often makes their SIBO worse. Now, when it comes to supplemental garlic, that ratio is usually flipped and most people find it incredibly helpful. Now, it's important to keep a couple of things in mind when we're talking about using garlic to treat SIBO. The first is the form. Now, there are a lot of cheap garlic pills out there that are basically just crushed up garlic stuffed into a pill. Not only is that not going to be effective, but it can often make SIBO worse because, again, it's just garlic ground up and stuffed into a pill. So don't buy the cheap garlic supplements. They're not likely to help and they can cause 
problems. The second type of garlic is going to be your deodorized garlic. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but garlic has mm, just a bit of a smell. And certain preparations of garlic have the smell removed, which is great because you don't have to smell like a pizza. But the problem here is that the smelly part is the stuff that kills the bacteria, fungus, parasite. It's that killing part of the garlic. So when you remove the smelly part, it may still do a good job on other things like acting as an antioxidant or heart health, but it's really, it's not gonna do the job of killing SIBO. What you're really looking for here is garlic extract, where they're gonna take the bacteria killing compounds and remove them mostly from the bacteria feeding fibers and concentrate them. This is gonna give you the most bang for your buck. We'll go ahead and list a couple of products that we found helpful in the comments below so you can check them out there. So, there you have it. Can you use garlic to treat SIBO? Absolutely you can. Why has the doctor told you that you may need to avoid food garlic, but is now giving you a supplement with garlic in it? Because food garlic tends to have more of those bacteria feeding fibers that the bacteria, than, that the bacteria love than the bacteria killing compounds, and most good supplements are going to be the reverse you or anyone you know is dealing with IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, I'd like to offer you the quick guide we've put together on how we treat IBS here at Aspire Natural Health. All you need to do is fill out the short form below and we'll happily send that to you for free. So please click down below. At Aspire Natural Health, we are experts at treating digestive issues and autoimmune diseases. If that's you, we'd love to connect. We offer a no obligation, no pressure chat to see if we can help you, if we're the right fit to work together. If we are, we'll move forward. And if we're not, we'll do our best to connect you with the person who can best help you. You have nothing to lose, so please call us now at 425 202 78 or email us at info at Until next time, folks, take care.